Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kuchera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kuchera. Welcome in. Good afternoon. Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those tuning in today in a number of different ways. We'll remind you, you could tune in and listen to us on the radio at KDOW 1220 AM on the dial, or you could go online if you're, uh, you have Internet access anywhere in the world during the hours of 3 to 4 Pacific Daylight Time. Go on to KDOW.biz. You could log on. Let me log on. Just go onto that website and click on the button that says Listen Live, and uh, you automatically be able to listen to the show between this time, 3 to 4 Pacific Daylight Time, every day online. Also, Facebook, uh, love to have the um, interaction back and forth. We're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, the Facebook live streaming during the show most of the time, just about every day, unless we're not in the studio. Then keep an eye out for that. If you see a blank screen, you know what's going on. Then there's no Joe, there's no Real Estate Radio Live if you happen to see the screen blank or nothing's up there. Otherwise, we're with you every day live on Facebook streaming. And then lastly, be sure to download the podcast. Go to uh, iTunes and type in Real Estate Radio Live or go to our website and uh, download the podcast. And that way you can listen to the show anytime you want at your convenience. We're live show again during this time period only, so if you want to reach us, if you have any questions, a couple different ways to do that, 1-800-516-1220, that's 1-800-516-1220 if you want to get your calls on the air during the live portion. If you'd like to text or if you're listening to this via podcast, the best way to contact us is 408 838 Topic today is going to be... Um, we're going to continue talking on and off about this competitive market. And most of you know if you're out there, whether you're a seller and you're trying to sell a home, that is less of a chore, trying to sell your home, than it is trying to buy a home today. Most of you know what I mean if you're out there. If you're a real estate agent or if you're in this market or if you're a buyer or seller, you're fully aware of what I'm talking about here. As a buyer, it's an extremely difficult competitive market. Hard to get the offers ex accepted. You're uh, up against a tremendous amount of competition. You have very little inventory. And um, it's a tough time to be a buyer. So what I'm going to talk about today is in a competitive marketplace like this, what are some of the things you could do to get your offer accepted, a non-contingent offer accepted? And you're going to hear this may sound a little bit repetitive to some tuning in today because I do a little bit about this topic usually once every other week or so. And the reason why is because we get a lot of questions and comments about, Joe, what, is, what else is it that we could do? What else could we do? What other kind of opportunities do we have? Or what other options do we have to get their offer accepted? And it is a tough market. I mean, some of the questions that come up, am I working with the right real estate agent? Is my financing in line the way it's supposed to be? Um, you know, is there anything else I could do uh, to communicate with the listing agent? How much more competitive can I be? How much really do I know what the offer should be? How much should I increase my offer? There's all these questions that go around in terms of this, um, this really, really competitive market. So I'm going to talk about some of the strategies, some of the things to do if you're a buyer and some of the suggestions that I'm going to have, um, also some ideas and some different steps to take if you're out there in this competitive marketplace. So the first one, which is probably the most obvious, but it is the obvious, the easiest way to do to make this happen if you want to have a competitive offer is obviously not have a property to sell, right? People are going, well, no, no kidding, Joe. I, I didn't need you to tell me that. But if, for some reason, some people are out there and, you know, maybe you have a unique situation where you have a place to rent, 
or maybe you have a place to stay, you have a, a rental property, or you have parents or relatives, someone that says, hey, listen, sell your, go ahead, don't worry about it, sell your home, get it sold, that way you can make a non, non-contingent offer, what you could do in the meantime, if your house sells and you need a place to stay, you can rent here from us, you could rent this room, you could use this area. My point is, is obviously in a perfect world, if there's a way you could sell your home or not have a contingent offer, then that's the obvious thing to do. Not everybody has that luxury. It's, it's not everybody that has that luxury to be able to sell their home in advance because you don't have a place to live. It's that simple. Now, one of the other things you could entertain, we'll have a conversation about this, is put your home on the market, sell your home, maybe do a 60-day rent back, a 30- to 60-day rent back. That's another strategy a lot of people are using. In other words, you put your home on the market, you take offers, and one of the, one of the um, really one of the conditions of the offer or what the offer they're going to accept will be, listen, I'll tell you what, we'll accept this offer only if you agree to a 30- or 60-day rent back. That happens sometimes too. And that's a good strategy for some people. And they, and they might say, there's still no guarantee that now there's still not a guarantee that you're going to find you're going to find a property in 30 to 60 days, but it does give you some more time. It buys you some more time. So one of the strategies: can you sell your house early? And if you can sell your house early, see if you get a 30 or 60 day rent back. Do you have the ability to rent something from someone else temporarily, just in case? These are some of the ideas. Some of you may already know this, but um, again, these are these are um, worthy to share and uh, and get this out to you. So the second thing, one of the other things you could do is um, this is a little tricky, but I see this happen again a fair amount of times. And and you have to be working together as a team, and the real estate agent, the lender, everybody on both sides has to be working together as a team. One of the other things that I see happening is that. You get your house ready as a seller. You get it ready. It's not quite on the market, but you do everything you can to it in preparation of putting it on the market within a minute's notice. That's the key. So the reason I say this is that in in a market like this, your house is going to sell pretty quickly, most likely. The odds are. So you get your place ready. It's let's call it's called listed ready and ready to go, ready to go. And then you're out looking, right? You're out looking for a place. And then all of a sudden you find a place and you look like you're really serious and look like you're going to be a serious candidate for that offer. And the minute your offer is accepted, you turn and you put your house on the market right away. And what this does, it's a little bit of a a timing play, but what this does is it gives you the ability to quickly sell your home and you could still, if it's it's an ideal situation, you can make a non-contingent offer and here's how you do it. You put an offer on the place that you want. You give you, you know, right? You put an offer on the place you want. Your house is going to sell pretty quickly. The minute your home that you put on the market for sale, you find a buyer, and all contingencies are released. This is a little tricky, so see if you could follow this. So, when you find a buyer for your home, and if you accept an offer where there's no contingencies, then that's even better. The minute you have that, what you want to do is get that contract to the lender. So someone would send that to someone like me that's doing the financing on the other side of that purchase. You get it to us, and that contract or that addendum says there's no contingencies. We have a set, We have a buyer for this property, and we're good to go. What happens with that when there's no contingencies on the sale of your home then the lender of record that you're borrowing the money for the purchase on the purchase side, they release those liabilities. In other words, let's say you have a $500,000 loan on the home you're trying to sell, and you just got in the contract to sell your home, and it was a non-contingent offer, and you're good, an offer, and you're good to go. Once we get that offer, and we look at we look at it as a lender, and we say, perfect, non-contingent offer, you're good to go, we release contingencies. Guess what? That means the liabilities on that $500,000 loan 
are removed. They won't count those towards your liabilities on the purchase. This is another way to, to get by this. This is another way to do it. It's a little tricky. Um, some people aren't comfortable with this, and I understand it. There's, they, you know, I don't want to take the risk, Joe. What if my house doesn't sell? What if I can't find a buyer? Um, there's some additional strategies around this that I'm not going to go into major detail. But I would say that um, if you're struggling with this, and you have some, I mean, you want some more detailed ideas or even examples I could give you that I, I could give you even more than I give you on the show. You know, give me a call. Contact me during the week. 408-838-9060. Most of you listen to the show. You know how to contact me. You could email joe at areradiolive.com. I do this every day. I work with, you know, many, many, many different real estate agents. And uh, there's a lot of different strategies to try to employ to try to get your offer accepted. And this is this is one of them. This is just a couple. So that is just a few different ideas um, of how to make a non-contingent officer or offer or have a better chance of having your offer being accepted. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to continue talking about some of the ideas. What do you do in a competitive market? How do you make a non-contingent offer? When I come back, I'm going to talk about some additional strategies. If you have any questions, 1-800-516-1220. Get your calls on the air or text 408-838-9060. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Facebook audience, stay tuned. We'll be back with the live portion of the show in about two minutes or so. Thank you. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachera with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending, and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDLW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live with you uh, streaming live on Facebook. You could tune in on the radio, KDOW 1220 AM. You could also listen to us live online. If you go to KDOW.biz, click the button that says Listen Live. And also be sure to download the podcast. You go to iTunes, type in Real Estate Radio Live. Or you could also go to uh, go to our website at reradiolive.com. Download the podcast, uh, follow us anywhere. Topic today is uh, in a competitive marketplace like this, how to best get your uh, non-contingent offer accepted. I'm going over some different ideas, thoughts, uh, options. One of the reasons I'll do this every other week or so, you'll hear these kind of these same scenarios every few weeks. So if it sounds redundant to some, I apologize. But there's a reason, the reason uh, that I bring them up on a fairly regular basis is because we get I get a lot of emails, phone calls, feedback like with this frustration. So the reason why I bring these topics up, a lot of these topics on the show, if we rerun them, if we talk about it a little more than uh, normal, it's because we sense that the marketplace wants more education information in a period of time where they're struggling or there's some frustration in a certain aspect of real estate. And what we're hearing right now is there is a certainly a level of frustration around um, the buyer's marketplace, and that is because inventory is so low and it's super competitive, 
and it just makes it really tough for a buyer. It really does. And so you want to look at all these different options, and a lot of people get frustrated with them. And um, I'm hearing, you know, from time to time, people just say, Joe, I'm taking a break. It's ridiculous. I can't say I blame them, but um, what I would say is for those out there, if you're thinking about taking a break or you're getting frustrated, um, hang in there. And the reason why I say that is I don't know that it's going to get much better anytime soon. And if I, for instance, if I thought, if I had any indication that we were going to get a dip in the market or maybe the market was going to slow or all of a sudden there was going to be a flood of more inventory on the market and you buyers would have a lot more opportunities and improved opportunities to get your offer accepted and more, um, more inventory on the market, I would say, hey, hold off for six months, wait till next year. You know, I'd give you some ideas of that. You've heard me say some of this stuff in the past. I mean, you go back and listen to some of my past shows over the last several years. I am proud of the fact that because I study this market and I research every single day of all aspects of real estate and lending and everything about this market, that if there are trends that I see and that I understand that are either coming or going or changing, I'll share them with you on a fairly regular basis. I mean, you could go back all the way back as far as 2009, 2010, when I was recommending to people to come back in the market and buy because it was going on in 2009, 2010. There was the buy signal, get back in and buy. I know it was nerve-wracking and it was hard for people to think about that, but, you know, it turns out 2010, to, between 2010 and 2012 was some great times to buy. You could argue it was a good to, time to buy all the way up until 2013. But what I'm suggesting is that when we study this market and study this industry like we do, we're going to pass this information on to you. And so what I'm saying today is if I had any indication or research that would tell me that I could share with you, that I would say, hey, hold off, take a break, you know, get out of this crazy market and come back in June of next year, for example. And I, I can't say that right now. And the reason I can't is because all the, all the data and the research that I have and that I work on every day and I receive every day, and it's not just mine, this is third-party objective reports, information that I gather every single day, would suggest that, I don't know that anything is going to change in this marketplace in the Silicon Valley, in this, this really competitive marketplace, for over the next couple of years. As we sit here today, in November of 2017, I really think we have a pretty strong, pretty strong, stable, I'm going to call it stable, I think that's a better word, a fairly strong, stable real estate market for the next two to three years. I really do, going into 2020. What happens after that? I don't know. Interest rates are going to tick up a little bit next year. They will, unless something happens that we don't know about. As we sit here today, again, I'm going to report on information that we, that we know best. And unless there's something that happens that we don't know about, it, there is a good chance that interest rates will be up maybe as much as one full percent by this time next year. Rates are still good. Even if they go at one full percent, you could argue that historically speaking, they're still wonderful. So for some people, that might not make them flinch at all. For others that are out there buying and you're right on the bubble of qualifying, that does concern you because if right now you're approved for a million-dollar home and if rates go up one-half percent, it may be the difference in that million-dollar home. Maybe now you can only afford a $900,000 home or an $850,000 home. So for some of those that are on the fence with qualifying, this does market changes, you know, if they even change just a little bit, do make a difference. And I would keep an eye on that. So the reason I'm elaborating a little bit on this again is that as I share this information with you about how to better, how to better have a chance of getting your offer accepted, keep in mind that I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. I really don't. Um, so some other examples. We talked about first, obviously, sell your home first. That's an ideal situation. Not everybody could do that. Secondly, um, some of the options are, you know, if you have, if you're lucky enough to sell your home, rent somewhere else, uh, have an opportunity to have a relative, a parent, or someone be able to stay with them while you aggressively look for, obviously, that's another great idea. 
I would seek that out. It's not Obviously, it's not wonderful, right? No one wants to move twice. No one wants to move their stuff and then move it again. But these are all potential adjustments you have to make if you're in a market like this. Now, one of the other things to consider is bridge financing. It's expensive, and um, but it is out there and it is available. And I'll, so let me talk a little bit about how bridge financing works. Let's say you have your current home on the market for sale. And that home you're trying to sell for a million dollars, and let's just say you owe three hundred thousand on it, right? And you're going to you're going to try to buy a house for one point five million over here, and you want to make a non non contingent offer. One of the ways to do it would be we have other people have we have I have personally um, private financing, independent financing where people do this. They do bridge bridge loans, so they could bridge the equity from your departing residence and help you make that purchase so that you can take a, make a non-contingent offer. You could do that with bridge financing if you have enough equity in your departing residence. Okay, We could make that happen. Now, that's the good news. The challenging part of that is bridge financing is expensive. Typically, this is private money or referred to as hard money with some people, but it's private money financing. So you're going to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 8, 9, 10% on interest, interest only. You know, that's really, even though that's a high interest rate, it, it's not that bad because you're not going to carry that loan for a long period of time. What The, the harder part for bridge financing for people is you typically going to pay at least two and maybe three points. So if it's, you know, if it's a, let's say a $500,000 bridge loan, and you pay two points. That's ten. Could be ten to fifteen thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Some people would say, "Well, yeah, it's a lot of money, Joe." But twelve to fifteen thousand dollars is better than losing out on that home over there that I don't want to lose out. And I love that home. So that's that's definitely one of the options. All right, we're going to take another break. When I come back, I'm going to continue talking about other options, suggestions, ideas, how you get your offer accepted, how you make a non-contingent offer. or text 408-838-9060. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. I'll be back with the live portion of the show in just a couple minutes. For those on Facebook, continue with us. On today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Kuchera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, uh, live uh, on uh, Facebook right now during our show. During the shows, we'll do those live feeds every single day, Monday through Friday. Of course, you can listen in at KDOW 1220 AM and download our podcast when you get a chance at reradiolive.com. Today, I'm talking about the uh, options, ideas, suggestions, I, you know, how to get, how to have a better chance to get your offer accepted. The reason why I'll bring this topic up usually a couple times a month is that we get a lot of requests from people about the frustration in the marketplace. And I wouldn't say my job, but my objective here for the show has always been to provide education information to the listeners, the people that uh, reach out. Uh, The studies that we do, the information that we bring in, a lot of these shows are triggered by the desire of um, the interest of people out there in the marketplace. So a lot of these shows are really coming from not necessarily ones that I'm coming up with or making up or going, hey, I think today I'll do this. 
it, most of it's not that at all. Most of these shows are driven by a need by the consumer's request, also driven by needs by the industry, data and information that we, we receive on a regular basis. Again, I can't stress enough. Uh, I know most shows, a lot of shows, are targeted or modeled after trying to sell something. You know, buy my software, buy my $350 kit, buy my newsletter, call 1-800 in the next 20 seconds and get this or get that. There's nothing wrong with those. But you have to decide and figure out, you know, what information are you trying to get and what's the motivation be, be behind the messenger? The motivation for us is to educate you, the consumer. And we also have a, a big falling with the real estate industry, and, and so we provide the real estate industry, who I think is, with a lot of valuable information as well. Every single day I read real estate publications. There's at least nine or ten of them that are out every single day with updated information on the real estate market, on the lending market, what the future holds in real estate. That's why once a week we do the future of real estate and lending. Stay tuned. The next coming weeks, I think I'm um, excited. Um, we hope that we could add some uh, at least one day a week about investment opportunities. We're in conversations with an investment group um, that deals in turnkey uh, purchases, purchases outside, uh, typically outside the state of California. And one of the reasons I'm excited to potentially bring that on the show is that I have a lot of people that ask, you know, where should they invest? Joe, I have money. I don't want to invest in real estate. And I, should know, I don't want to invest in rental properties here in the Bay Area, and I don't blame you. <laughs> the, the numbers don't pencil. They don't work. So we get a lot of people asking, where should I invest? Well, I know several people outside of California that have turnkey solutions programs in Texas, North Carolina, Florida, Kansas City, Detroit, um, all I could go on and on and on, a bunch of different places. I'm in conversations with a few of these, and I'm hoping if things come together, I'm going to be able to have someone on at least once a week, probably once a week, that is going to provide you, the consumer, with great, pertinent, up-to-date information on where is the best place to buy investment properties, turnkey properties, where you could buy properties from $100,000 to $150,000 or less, maybe in some cases, and have cash flow, and have very little out-of-pocket. There's some really exciting, you know, it's hard for people to understand that are listening to this show in the Bay Area. And that's why I want to bring this information to the show, and I'm hoping to do it in the next couple of weeks if everything comes together. What I want to do is educate the consumers here in the Bay Area that there are great investment opportunities outside of California in real estate. You don't have to live there. You don't have to be from there. You don't have to be an expert in it. But there are some really good people that are helping people invest in properties outside of California in different areas of California that are some great, great opportunities. They really are. And um, we're getting really close to bringing that, and I hope that uh, we could do that in the next couple of weeks. It would be exciting for me. It would be exciting for our listeners because we do get a lot of interest in that. So stay tuned for that for sure. All right, let's get back and talk a little bit about the um, – having the best chance to get your offer accepted. When we took the last break, I was just finishing up talking about bridge loans. That's another opportunity to make a non-contingent offer. If you take your exiting residence and you have some equity in that, we could bridge loan. We could take equity from that house and actually bridge it to the purchase and allow you the ability to make a non-contingent offer. Now, that's great. That's the good news. The tough part is bridge loans expensive. I said that right before I take a break, and I'll say it one more time, and then we'll move on to the next one. Bridge loan, bridge financing is somewhere between 8 9 10% interest, typically, unless you have a personal friend of yours who's willing to give you a deal. And, uh, and they're typically 2 or 3 points, or 2 or 3% of the m amount borrowed. So if you bridge $500,000, it could cost you ten to $15,000 just to bridge that money. That's expensive. Some people would say, Joe, it's not that expensive because I don't want to lose that house. And that's true. It's a different, everybody's got a different perspective. So that's bridge loan. The next thing you could do is you could take another property. It could be, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but a little bit different. 
and it's called cross collateralizing. It's people, you know, refer it to crossing or crossing property or collateralizing property, whatever. But it's cross collateralizing. What it is is you take another property, kind of like I talked about on the bridge, but you could cross collateralize the equity in that property where you're actually. This is the the difference in cross collateralizing and and bridge is with bridge you actually have an institution. Um, someone, whether it's a private individual, hard money, whatever, you actually have someone saying, on that property right there, I'm going to loan you, I'm going to bridge you $500,000 to make this transaction, transaction work. And for that $500,000, this is my, these are my fees, okay? That's a bridge. A little different. Now, if you're looking at the same property, someone might say, let's just say it's not your primary, but you have a rental property sitting over here and it's owned free and clear and it's worth a million dollars. There's investors that will say, I'll tell you what, we're going to cross collateralize that. Since you have so much equity there, we're going to look at that property and we're going to lean, we're going to put a $500,000 lien on that property. And we're going to help you make this transaction without a non, with, 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 doing a non-contingent offer without without having a contingent offer, in other words. So that is different than actually taking money, paying on money. The cross-collateralization, there's really you're not moving any money or funds around. You're just leaning that property over there, leaning on that property, putting a lien on it, I should say. And there's our investors that will do that. That's another way to do that. These are some things that make people initially nervous when they hear about them. But Honestly, these are the types of things you should get yourself familiar with if you're out there competing in this marketplace. If you're a real estate agent and you want to have better offers or you know want to be a better offer to your um, to your consumers, to your clients, some of the really good real estate agents know all this stuff. If you're working with a really good real estate agent, they're probably going to tell you all the same stuff I'm telling you, and that's a good sign because they've not only been doing this for a while. But they understand the, strat- the strategies behind, um, you know, doing what it takes to get that offered. So if, you, if you're hearing these types of things that I'm talking about today from your real estate agent, then most likely those are good signs that you have a good real estate agent. Now, conversely, if you're listening to this show, whether it's live or on podcast, and you're going, well, wait a minute, Joe, or you're scratching your head, you're going, whoa. How come my real estate agent or my lender hasn't told me about these other opportunities? Then, conversely, let me tell you, there's a good chance you're probably not working with the right people. And honestly, you'll hear me say this a lot. I don't pull any punches with this. I I do this for you, the consumer, for education, information. I don't do this show to sugarcoat, to to feel like I need to make friends with someone or to feel like I want to you know, develop a relationship that doesn't matter to me. I don't, what I do this for is to give you the best information. What I'm saying is when it's such an important transaction and you're not hearing some of these strategies and ideas from your real estate agent or your lender, there's a good chance that you're probably not working with the right person. And if someone takes that personal, fine. But let me tell you, I'm talking to you, the consumer, directly. When you're about ready to make these kinds of decisions, this is not personal. I say this all the time in meetings and different business. We're about to have a business conversation, not a personal conversation. I say that a lot in different situations. And I'll say that right now for you, the consumer, if you're listening to this. Have a business conversation with your current real estate agent or your lender. If they're not sharing this this kind of information with you, and they're not educating you and and telling you, hey, listen, let me, let me sit down with you and share some other ways, some ideas, some thoughts. If they're not talking like this or sharing this with you, there's a good chance you're working with the wrong person. Do you want to take the chance? Do you want to put the likelihood of you getting that house or not in the hands of a person that, A, is not educated enough, doesn't understand the market, Maybe they're not that interested, or maybe they're doing it part-time and they don't really don't care. I don't know. Do you want to put that responsibility on a person like that? That's the thing you need to think about. All right, I'm going to take uh, – this is the last break. I'm going to take a break. We're going to come back. I'm going to finish up some final thoughts 
about these different types of financing and options that you could do to better get your offer accepted. 1-800-516-1220 if you want to get your calls on the air. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. I'll be back with you for the live portion of the show in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending, and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live. On iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon as we wind down the show. Just about another seven or eight minutes left. Uh, this is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Have uh, Great show with a lot of good information today. The, the topic is, uh, in a competitive marketplace like this, how do you get your offers accepted? How do you do non-contingent offers? I'm going through some of the ideas. Although I got a call on the line. looks like we have a caller. Uh, I believe it is Dave in San Jose. Dave, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Great, great topic. Let me just tell you about my situation first. I had great. a foreclosure thanks, six years ago. Mm-hmm. I had a foreclosure six years ago. And uh, last year I bought a house, okay? So I put down uh, about 25%, right? Now, because the foreclosure was less than seven years, I went ahead. They they put PMI. They call it PMI insurance, but it's not the normal PMI insurance, right? Correct. It's mortgage, yeah. The the closing disclosure says it will last from year one through year 11. Mm -hmm. It states exactly how long it's going to last. Now, mm-hmm. I'm getting calls. I know thousands of people in Santa Clara County are getting these calls and letters saying, let us help you refinance and get rid of your PMI, right? And mm-hmm. I'll maybe right. call one just for the heck of it. And they'll say, yep, your PMI is going to last the length of the loan. I'm like, no, I've got, I've got documents. I've got <laughs> signatures. I've got contracts that say it's going to last 1 through 11, right? This, right. Is, this is affecting, I'm telling you, thousands of people are getting these. What do you, what do you have to say That's about that? That's interesting. Yeah, well, I could tell you that you've probably heard, maybe not, but I've done several shows before, Dave, on um, just the unfortunate part about uh, stuff you get in the mail and calls you get, and and it's just it's so hard to know who to trust and and what's right and what's wrong because there's so much garbage out there and there's so much information, and and people you know pay to get eyeballs and emails, uh, and you don't know where they're coming from, but I can tell you that uh, you know after seven year period. You know, you can, <clears throat> depending on your circumstance, you can get out of that private mortgage insurance, that mortgage insurance. Did you get an FHA loan? Is that what you did? Yes, it's FHA, but keep keep in mind, it's a 3.5 rate. I'm happy with the rate. I'm not going to get any lower right. the way things are going. I'll ride right. it out through the first 11 years. I don't care. I don't want it to go beyond that, though. So I don't care about the seven years being up and I can refinance. I'll stay with the way it is. It's all good. It isn't much. But yeah. my point is, the, the closing disclosure is a closing disclosure. These are contract documents. Right. I mean, you know, right. just change the term. Yeah, no, and the, the problem is, is a lot of people don't, in this industry, um, I, you know, again, I've done several shows on this. They pay for leads. You don't know who to trust. A lot of people will get lists, David, and what they'll do is they just they pull lists and they pay for them. And they'll do spam emails or phone calls or whatever they do, robocalls and all the. There's all kinds of different strategies for marketing. Unfortunately, it's you know 90% of it's garbage, 
And um, but you, the good news is you know exactly what you have and you understand what you have. Um, but you know the problem is this industry is fl- is flooded with a lot of people that don't care much about doing right for someone and getting the right information as much as they do, you know, what can I do to close a loan? That's the unfortunate part. That, and if I may close with saying this, that's why relationships are so important. You've got to find yeah. the right person. And this isn't, one, this isn't a one-off deal. Find the right person. Stay with the right person. When things come up throughout your life, people you know, whatever, get people you trust, and that's, you're going to be much better off. Well, I'll tell you what, David, yeah, you know, I love that comment, too. Thank you for sharing that, and thank you for for listening to the show, and thank you for calling in and uh, and giving us some advice because you hit it right on. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, Dave. That's a great call, um, you know, for a couple different reasons. The reason I love that call right there, and I want to take a minute just to talk a little bit about it. Number one, Dave is an educated caller. Dave is an educated consumer. Dave from San Jose just called. It was a great call. This is one of the reasons that I love doing this show. One of the main reasons is that I get these calls of people who take the time to educate themselves. And whether it's listening to this show or reading a book or educating themselves in different ways, the point is, is they take it very serious. And I love that. And Dave is a perfect example. First, the fact that he was educated Secondly, that he was kind enough to share some information with us. And third, the last thing that I love about what Dave said, and you hear me talk about this all the time, is when you find a trusting quality relationship with someone in the real estate business, lending business, whatever, stick with it. Stick with it. If you trust someone and you know they're solid and they're ethical and they're going to do what's right by you, stick with that person. You can't can't put a value on on a good relationship. Too many people, they stray every once in a while, they go out shopping, they get sucked into this, hey, let me save you this and let me save you that. Uh, but that was the last thing I wanted to mention about Dave, what he said. And uh, and thank you again, Dave, for calling, for listening to the show, being a loyal listener, but more importantly, for sharing your story with us. But the last piece is what I loved about hearing from Dave is he talked about the importance of relationships. And if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know the value I put on that. And it's, uh, it's a really, really, um, you know, it's a, it's a great, great uh, conversation to have. All right, we've got a, one quick minute to go. So real quick, I want to wrap it up. We talked today about getting your offer accepted, a better chance of doing that, how to make a more competitive offer, how to make a non-contingent officer offer, I should say. Lastly, if you want more information about this, Give me a call, 408-838-9060. You can always go to our website, reradiolive.com. You can email me, contact me this way. Unfortunately, we got a deck out. We're running out of time, but stick with us. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for those tuning in on Facebook. Thanks again for the radio. Thanks again for those tuning in online. Make sure you go to the website or iTunes and download the podcast, realestateradiolive.com. Joe Cachera on. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Until then, have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Tune in, log in, download our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com. reradiolive.com.